looked in the face and I put it on the head of my friend. And he said, fuck off, Hill. And then I pulled the trigger. And there was one room still, a uh, bullet still in the chamber I didn't know. And I shot almost to. I've done, I've done 61, I think 63, 63 illegal raves before I get caught by the police. Anymore, and they just came to the yeah, front door and with the whole, whole army of uh, Barretta. At some point, life turned against me and, and I collapsed. And then uh, a year later, I had two years later, I had, a year later, I had nothing anymore. This, this tape is going to be worth a million. Hi, I'm Tina, and I'm the owner of Underdogs. Underdogs is getting people in front of the camera who have a really tough life story, who made it from the bottom up to the top. And today I'm really excited because I have the chance to make an interview with Ilya Reimann and he is a famous legend in the dance scene, but before he was homeless. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel and let's go to the interview. I'm really excited. Today I'm here with Ilya Reimann and Ilya is a really famous legend in the music scene called Geber. Ilya, what is Geber in your words? Geber means uh, friendship, being French, being, uh, it's all about unity, it's all about uh, connection, music, dance, having a good time with people you like. What kind of music is it? It's powerful. It's strong, it's energetic. Okay. It's, uh, it's there, it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's round, it's hard, it's strong. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of energy. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, okay. And when do you hear it the first time Gabber? When was it? Well, it's just slowly moved into Gabber. It's not like all of a sudden there was Gabber. It's mm -hmm. just that in the in the in the Dutch rave scene in the end 80s, early 90s, it was just Acid House, you know, the, the old original house. House is niet zomaar muziek of zomaar een feest. House is een verschijnsel, een fenomeen. And then it starts splitting up in what we call mellow. And the other one just get a bit stronger, a bit more strong rave techno, mm -hmm. gang, gang, gang. And that beat gets a bit quicker and a bit kicker. And then, yeah, then at some point, you can say this would be the first gabber. So it's, we were just rolled into that. Okay. And then, yeah, 90, 90, end 92, 93, it really exploded. Then it really became crazier and crazier and harder and harder. Mm -hmm. It was unstoppable, the train. Unstoppable, mm. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I know that your story is really marked by ups and downs and I heard that you got homeless with 15. What happened that you get homeless? Um, yeah, I was a little bit unlucky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I, I was, um, 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 my parents divorced, both got new partners, so I was a little bit in between my father and my mother. And I went on holiday with uh, my father camping mm -hmm. and um, um, I was just a little rebelish child from 15 years old and that night we were listening with a small radio in our tent and uh, our my favorite my football club Ajax became champion and we went out and we walked through the forest and parents were camping there so we were like pupils do you know a bit separate and we came in near and uh, we did a long walk at uh, in the dark and we came by a hotel near the highway and there was a window open on the first floor and we just like rebelish I'm not a criminal you know I was too young I was still school kid and my friend gave me feet up and I went through the window and I was in a police uniform and a bag. And was the, the room was empty and I took the bag and showed it down and we ran to the forest and uh, opened the bag and there was a police gun in. So I had a police gun but I didn't, I knew there was no internet those days. You don't look on the internet, uh, Carl, Carl, P5, how you open it. I remember seeing from movies that there must be a button in the bottom of your press and then the bullets come out. Mm. So I looked in the bottom, yeah, and then the bullets came out. It, so I looked in the face and I put it on the head of my friend. And he said, fuck off, Hill. And then I pulled the trigger. And there was one room still, a uh, bullet still in the chamber I didn't know. And I shot 
almost to his head, just like this. So then, of so course. So the bullet comes really out of the gun? Yes, yes, over this height, over the camping terrain, through all the tents. And, and oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, we didn't hit, hit nobody, the friend just got it like this. And okay. I thought it was empty, you know, it was just okay. an instant child, yeah. So that, uh, of course, that came out. I was able to hide the gun and everybody was looking from the noise, from what is that? And a few days later, of course, I got caught with that police gun. Mm. And then I uh, had to go to, then my different life start. Then I had to go to um, like boarding school. Yeah, mm. like a place where children come together that have no parents anymore. Okay. Yeah. So there everything starts. That was not a nice place to be. Okay. Yeah, that was a... Uh, and so you lived then on the street or where did yeah, you live Yeah, first then? I stayed in that place, but it was not a very safe place to be. It was really uh, um, um, a lot of violence and a lot of, uh, it was, I didn't like to be there. So um, I climbed over the fence and escaped and I went back to Amsterdam. And then I just started squatting a place in uh, Belmer, which is a uh, place in uh, Amsterdam where uh, just high flats and, and, and uh, yeah, big dark area of, uh, of Amsterdam, mm. but lots, a lot of empty houses. So I squatted the place and I was 15, almost 16. And I just uh, stayed under the radar there for a few years. And where do you live then? Do you have your own flat or? Yeah, I squatted my own flat. Okay. I took electricity from the hallway. <laughs> just uh, uh, take a little bit of electricity, put it in the wall. So some parts of my house had electricity and I just started taking care of myself. Okay. Yeah. How do was you a rough feel time. at that time? So you said rough time, but how do you feel in this time? Uh, going back to, I felt, I felt pretty, much, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I felt really free because after the, the boarding school, um, yeah, I was out. I, was, uh, I escaped there with, an, uh, with a girl, by the way. So we were together um, there. And now very quickly, I meet my dog. I bounced into a German Shepherd uh, kind of dog. Mm -hmm. and uh, on the street um, and he stayed with me for 15 years so I met my best friend there uh, and yeah I was quickly I found some furniture on the street and some from getting stuff together and 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 just making some money and stealing some food and just uh, hustling, yeah, hustling and surviving and uh, yeah I just thought okay mm. this is better than somebody else controlling my life like a life artist so yeah like yeah. a life artist yeah <laughs> yeah Nice. Yeah. Okay. But it was not all romance. It was a lot of uh, danger there. There was a lot of uh, the, the flat was very much empty. Uh, many houses were empty, mm. and uh, yeah, there were a lot of people uh, who do harm. It was not a safe place. Mm. So I have had um, hard times there as well. But it also shaped me, of course. There, um, 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 I started to fit in there. What happened there that you say it was really? Not safe? Well, um, I got one time, I got home and so, so, um, um, you could see people burgling the houses and they just climb off the balconies, all the stores and up and down. So lay in your bed and all of a sudden you see poop, face going around uh, the corner of your balcony. And then okay. and, uh, and uh, one time I got home and the whole house was completely, even the couches were cut to pieces and everything was from the wall that completely destroyed my house. And you come mm -hmm. home and it, when it's it's still your house, you know, it's just, you're locking your own curtains and at some point you land there and it's your safe place. And you come home and it's with such an aggression. Uh, and also what is the, the most danger came from where you're not expected from. You had guards, security, who walked through those uh, flats, who had to protect them. And they start bullying me a lot. Okay, yeah. for what reason? I don't know. Not having a life themselves, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Um, I, from one of the security guards, I got my dog, Sonny, and then they started uh, harassing me. So every day they took, I don't know, I have a 16 years old kid. So if I would be the security guy of 31, 32, whatever, and I would go to my work every day, knowing there's a kid there um, from 16, trying to keep his head above water, mm. I will ask my wife, hey, give me some extra food. I'll go see that guy and help him a bit. Mm. But no, they were just uh, cutting my electricity every night, uh, twice, they moved around twice. Um, really uh, harassing me and mm. so sometimes uh, one time the police even came and uh, I was fighting with them and yeah so that but I had also some peaceful weeks it was uh, okay. rough on the street and there was lots of junkies you know like um, go up and uh, it's just a uh, light zzz, 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 working not working and graffitis and just like an old bonded uh, flat would look like mm. 
Okay, so you also now mentioned junkies. Um, so drugs were also a part of your life, right? No, not then. Yeah, that was there. Mm. It was used. People, but there were lots of using and, uh, and junkies there. But I didn't use. Okay. I might have drink a beer once in a while, or might get once in a while have a sip of a joint. Mm. But I did not uh, get any drugs or had no. Was not a part of my life yet. What was uh, the part where you decided to go off the street? No, there was not a decision. Uh, I, I tried, of course, always to get a house, but I was 16. And in Holland, you um, cannot sign for yourself until you're 18. Mm -hmm. Until you're 18, only your parents have to sign for you. So I couldn't get a house, I couldn't get any students, I couldn't get nothing. And it's, uh, so uh, um, I just lived on the street. And then the, after seven months, I got kicked out of that house. And then I moved to all kinds of places, slept on all kinds of attics or some houses I can rent for a little while. or. And at uh, 18, I got pretty tired of that life. Mm. And then I was finally 18. And then I went to the government and said, hey, I need a house. I was working. I was a painter and making broken windows. I was working in the building construction. Mm. and I was not too lazy to work. Um, so uh, yeah, I said, I need a house. And then uh, they gave me a little small, my first little house. Uh, yeah, not okay. that was like a closet, but it was my closet, <laughs> at home, and I got a key and, and a contract. And You're yeah. a safe place then? Yeah, that was finally at 18, I was 18, three months 18, and then finally from all the, around Holland, living on the streets, you know, living everywhere, I finally got my own place. Yeah, and the life starts taking turns for me. Okay. Yeah. So also around about this time you started to organize parties, or when did it start? A little bit later, then I was 18. Then I could also, um, when I lived there, I started um, using drugs. Before that, like I said, we can have a beer in the weekend or smoke a joint, but I was not really uh, into that. And uh, there I got in touch, first time touched with uh, cocaine and I started smoking uh, hush every day. And uh, yeah, really, uh, drugs was really working well for me as well. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, I didn't enjoy cocaine. Uh, anyway, you asked when the party started. Um, Two years later, I guess I was around 20. Okay. Yeah, and I went to the very first, very, very, very first raves in Amsterdam. I was there and uh, I got in contact with uh, the little pill called ecstasy. Mm. And, and I thought, wow, <laughs> this is uh, what I want to do and this is what I'm going to do. This is going to get big. This is going to go all over the world. This is going to change the world. Mm. And I want to be part of that. It was a real summer of love happening in 1988. It was like, Amazing time in Amsterdam, amazing bus, an amazing vibe. This music came and we had just cassette tapes on in the park and we just take a little ecstasy and we're dancing and connecting with such a nice connecting with everybody. And my life on the street, living in every part in Amsterdam for a month here, two months there. So I knew also everywhere people and everywhere I knew. Uh, every so yeah, I started really connecting and uh, at my own house and start making a bit of money. I worked in a coffee shop, so selling hush, okay. dealing a bit of ecstasy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so that means um, you first started also to take drugs, and then afterwards you um, started to organizing parties. Yep. How could you combine this lifestyle? Well, actually, I cre I created a life around my using. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. everybody is ex ex accepting my behavior because okay. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in this event business. I worked in a coffee shop in the day. Uh, nobody's going to say, find it strange that you smoke on your work. Mm -hmm. If you work in a coffee shop, you just smoke all day. Uh, and then I do this, those house parties. So it's pretty normal there that people drink at least. And so that, uh, some people take drugs, some don't. So I got actually an environment uh, of people accepting my behavior. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because when I think about organizing parties, it's a lot to do. It's a lot of it stuff. So, yeah. and then also with this lifestyle, yeah. I just ask myself how you went through it. You know? Yeah, top sport. <laughs> yeah. If they would give medals for it, I would have go for gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, it was. It was really top sport. It was, uh, but I was young. I had a lot of energy. So, to shake my head in the morning and go. And we did illegal uh, parties. So um, we had always a cat and mouse game. With the police, you know, we squatted uh, abundant buildings like warehouses, mm. which were empty, sometimes not empty. And shit, there's still stuff in it. We just move it on the side, and then we just give a party, or under the uh, under the uh, uh, tunnels, under the under the highway. And we just uh, yeah, give illegal. And the police was uh, always too late. And they came and uh, damn, 
there were already a few thousand people and then they just let us be. Okay. Yeah. They were afraid of you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they were afraid of me. I think they think it might be better now. They tried always to find out where the next party was going to be. So okay. they listened to us on the phone. They followed us. Uh, but we make we, we invited people by flyers. Mm -hmm. There was no internet those days. Uh, we just say get together on the central station on that and that day, on that and that time. And then we bring you to the party. So when the police came to the party and there was already 2,000 people there, they thought, yeah, we have a handful of coppers now. We can stop this, make a whole scene, and then it's going to be a mess on the street. So just leave it. Sometimes they just uh, they came and said, "Open this door." Make they looked to some safety things, gave me some advices, and then okay. just party <laughs> on. Yeah. Als je naar dit soort locaties moet, dan kunnen ze achteraf zeggen: het is onveilig of het is. Uh, ja, je hoort niet. Maar als je naar een officiële locatie wil, dan uh, willen ze je niet, niet, niet eens helpen. Want op het moment dat je het woord haas in je lippen neemt, dan slaan die even ze stoppen door. En dan uh, willen ja? ze. Uh, ja, dat wordt helemaal gek. Je kan geen ruimte huren, niks. Ze bellen het adres op waar je toiletten huurt en zo. Van niet verhuren, want we nemen ze in beslag. En dan achteraf klagen op in de krant van de sanitaire voorzieningen zijn zo slecht. Ja, dat is allemaal. Uh, Ja. Dus is het echt zo dat jullie je gedwongen voelen om het uh, op dit soort die rare plekken te geven? Het is ook leuk natuurlijk om het op zo'n rare plekken te geven. I have, I, have, I, have done, I have done 61, I think 63, 63 illegal raves before I get caught by the police. Wow. Yeah, before I ended in prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you even got arrested for that, so. <laughs> yes, I've been in prison for... Uh, Okay. Imagine how good the parties were if you go to if you have to go to prison for organizing a party. It was a good party. <laughs> <laughs> they don't throw you in the party for in the prison for the, that was a shitty party. Go to prison. No, it was. <laughs> it was, it was really Only was, when you was make massive. Parties, yeah, yes. it was really like the police was looking like, oh my god. My, I remember the first time because house was new. There was whole new new the whole electronic dance music. Before that, there was no on the radio. You don't hear electronic beats. Just rock, pop, or whatever. And the first time the police came and we had an illegal and I see the police car coming in. <laughs> you just stand 10 minutes in front of the door, like, like in some industrial area. <laughs> Normally people go partying in the center of Amsterdam, in the clubs. Now it's somewhere in a bond and they're just all kids partying, going, you know, loud music, smoke coming out of a uh, warehouse. And they, could, they couldn't believe their eyes. They were, they were, <laughs> so I think they didn't know what to do. Yeah, took, I took, uh, took, them, took them 63 parties to find out what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And what happened then in the, at the 61st party? What happened then? Well, I had one, one time, for example, we decided, okay, we're going to do the next party. We have dead warehouse. We looked and yeah, it's empty. Okay, that's going to be the next place. And then the police find out where I wanted to use that, that place. So the, I came there in, uh, in, in the morning with my truck with podiums, sound systems. Booze, fences, uh, electricity, everything we had with us. And shit, police standing there. So we just quickly moved all directions. And we had to regroup and then think, okay, what do we do? And we squatted another place where we have given a party before and gave there the, gave the other parties. We went to the eye of the needle because all my money was in there. You know, we would just put all some of the money on the table, uh, me and my two partners. And then, uh, thanks God. And then we find a location of an uh, of an of an, uh, an an owner had a warehouse, and he said you can give your parties here. And the police even knew we gave the parties there, but they thought, okay, at least it's there now. We not have to chase them all around town now anymore. It's now at one spot. Let's keep it there for now. Mm -hmm. And then they they well, did like this for uh, for uh, for a while, till they did not do it like this anymore, and they just came to the yeah front door and. With a uh, whole army of uh, barrettas and uh, like in a movie. Yeah, like in the movies, really. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was so quick. And wow. they, they called it Operation Ponytail because uh, <laughs> we all had pon gabbers had ponytails in those. Uh, really? Later they have the bald heads and the Australians, but the early gabbers had uh, okay. ponytails and long hair. And okay. uh, they uh, raided in and cut me on the ground and we got him, we got him. Crazy. And it was 25 days prison. Okay. De inval werd gedaan omdat Multigroove geen vergunningen had en omdat de politie vermoedde dat er XTC en andere drugs werden verkocht. I was playing my set and the next thing you know, lots of boom, crashes, bang bang, whatever, I don't know what's going on. I thought a, I thought a speaker fell down or something. And I see a um, guy with mask like what I have on now. Zoop, zoop, bang. Well, you know, stop the record. <laughs> and to see what's going on. Next thing you know, we all lined up against the wall. Uh, 
Some people had to lay on the ground. Some people had bags over their heads. Luckily, I didn't have a bag over my head. But they uh, patted me down. They carted me off to jail. And I didn't know why, but I keep my mouth shut, you know, because I want to live. And uh, as it turns out, I got out the next day, and this is what uh, we found uh, the next week. What do you think, if we look at the part of the drugs, why do you start to take drugs? Was it out of fun, or do you think was it for a reason? Yeah, well, experimenting, like people do, kids do. Mm -hmm. you know, I think as long as uh, there are people walking on this planet, they experiment with plants and stuff, and what does it do? A um, big part is also uh, connection. Making, I noticed when, uh, when I was a kid and I go out, and you go to a club and there's some kids there hanging on the scooter and they're a year older than you and they have a comment about your shoes and, 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 and there's whole women and girls there and they're dancing and in the old days you have DJ playing disco and then once in a while they put a slow song on. And then you go to a girl and you ask if she wants to dance with you. And I came in and I just find it very intimidating. You know, I was like, I'm not going to dance, you know. Or, as soon as I think, we'll take some drinks and we'll use some drugs, that fear dropped off me. You know, I moved to the dance floor and I'm standing on, the, on top of the, of the bar dancing. I knew exactly what to say to that girl. I knew exactly all the guys were laughing with me and standing in front of my door the next day because we had a good fun together. So all I thought is, why the fuck did I not give that already at, uh, at uh, child, child garden, children's garden? <laughs> why do you have to find out this yourself when you're 16? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was really, uh, it was an... Uh, and medication for to make me complete and to make me connect with. I remember when I started using drugs, but also at my house, having yeah conversations so deep, so okay, almost like a spiritual going? experience. Okay. So I feel it's a spiritual something spiritual shortcoming, mm -hmm. which I replace with drugs. So this would mean in my eyes that in this moment when you start to take drugs you feel incomplete so if you have to take drugs to to make something then you're feeling incomplete or not if i take it i feel incomplete yeah or before you it. felt before taking drugs you felt incomplete because if you yeah, need so. something to do something else yeah, then so. it gives me a feeling that you felt incomplete or well not. at least after i start using a while if i not use it anymore mm. i feel incomplete okay. i don't know if i straight away felt so incomplete Okay. Just I noticed that when you use something, it takes fear away. It's easier to to yeah, to connect, to have mm -hmm. fun, and 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 yeah, when you have to drink a few beers, okay. it's just yeah. But after a while, it, I, I see it like I took medication, but I took the wrong medication. I start biting in my ass after a okay. while. Okay. Okay. In the beginning, it was always fun, you know, and then during the years, sometimes I start to notice that I use also during the week. Well, other people go in the weekend and then go to school and go, mm. and I don't So do then that. it was not fun anymore? Yeah, but it was still fun because I was still young. Okay. Yeah, I was still, could still handle it. I had not so much worries, of course, so my body could take, could take more. But I feel already then I also had periods that I used against my will. Okay. Especially with cocaine. Okay. Yeah, cocaine was my drugs of no choice. Yeah, as soon as I take a little bit of cocaine, I've got nothing to say anymore. It's not up to me when I stop. I think when I start using, we take a little bit and then we go party and then tomorrow I'm going to sleep because Monday I have an important appointment. Mm. But it's not up to me. At that moment, some dark power greater than me okay. takes the control. So what kind of drugs do you take then? You said you used cocaine, you used hush, you Maybe used Maybe it's simpler to use a list of things I don't use. Okay. <laughs> it's shorter. <laughs> No, it was uh, was uh, was hash. Uh, at that date, it was I like to smoke a lot of hash and weed, uh, alcohol, um, um, cocaine, ecstasy, MDMA, um, pff, a little bit of a uh, sleeping pill. That was uh, that was about it. I'm, I'm joking. Later, also I tried some other stuff, but I also at some point thought every time I try something, I got a new problem. So let's stop trying. So we <laughs> just did some ketamine and stuff. Um, first, when you started to take drugs, it was fun. Yeah. Yes. So if we also think about other people when they when when they see you talking, it's like okay, everything is fun. Okay, when I'm using drugs, but there's also a dark side of it, and yes. I just want to talk about also the dark sides. Yes. At first, there were no dark sides. Because it changes my personality. Yeah. It slowly changes my personality, okay. and you don't 
I don't see that at myself at that moment. You know, it just slowly, and then I think it's it's the woman I'm with, uh, it's the city I live in, it's it's the problems I have. It's but of course not it's me. It's my I'm the problem. And my using and my behavior and my that's what gives the problem. But I don't really see that, and and I just get slowly spiritual ill. I can just get completely out of balance. I'm in a not natural state mm. in which I am when I'm using. And it's difficult. I couldn't get myself out of that. Okay, and w in which situation do you saw, hey, that's not good anymore? Yeah, place? it was pretty clear. I had um, one time I was going to a um, fighting gala, kickbox. And with some par partners of mine, business partners, and uh, said, okay, but Monday I have that appointment. So we went there on Saturday. We do a little bit. We go to the club. We drink a bit of champagne. Take a little bit. I'm going to sleep Sunday evening. I need to sleep. So I took a sleeping pill. Then I changed my mind. <laughs> so I started using again. <laughs> no, I'm powerless. I can't stop. I still had cocaine, and then I kept my heart goes. Uh, Then I had to go to cardiac, uh, to the hospital, laying on the, what's it called? If, um, EKG? EKG? Yeah, when, mm. you, when you lay with all the machines, heart to mm. heart monitor, monitors, yes. yeah, like that. So, uh, like, and then they leave me alone and I, I, I got calm again. I didn't have a heart attack, I thought I had a heart attack. I got calm again, I was in the hospital and then I took cocaine out of my pocket and used while I was laying in the hospital. I could not stop. Mm. I can not stop. And I got a lot of willpower. I was always able to get things done, and but there I just I can't stop. I literally have no power. I have a lack of power to s stop when s uh, when as soon as I start using, and that became worse and worse and worse and worse over the years. In this moment, you realized, okay, this is yeah, this is insane. Insane, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what happened afterwards? After you realized, okay, that's insane. What have you I done? stopped using. Yeah? For two months. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I forgot how bad it was. Okay. <laughs> and then my head started to think, yeah, life is a bit boring, isn't it? It's all a bit, yeah, you know what I should do? I just drink. I'm not going to take anything else. And I drink a bit and it accelerates, you know, then it's I didn't understand that the, the this, uh, disease of addiction, um, I can only wait conquer that with if I don't use any mind altering substance. So I drink, then some voice in my head thinks, oh, it wasn't that bad. Sex was good. <laughs> you know, uh, mm. And I forget about the ambulance and the hospital and before I know I'm using again. Because mm. I have a an, an, an body that I have an allergic reaction to cocaine, most of cocaine, but I have a, a mind that thinks of cocaine all the time. So okay. I have a head that doesn't want to live without cocaine. I have a body who want, doesn't want to live with cocaine. So that's pretty much a problem. Okay, it's always a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The head wins. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And in this time, so now I hear it was a lot of partying, a lot of um, yeah. organizing parties, yeah. and also you partied a lot. Yeah. And also. Hundreds, thousands of parties, yeah. Yes, also other event company, uh, companies started to grow. So you were like the godfather, you started with this. Oh, like oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I say it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but um, everything started with you, like this guerrilla parties, you just do your thing and it was like the underground. And then there were like different companies who are building up this scene, you know. And also you wrote in your book that everyone around you also started to be a millionaire, but you're not. How do you felt when you realized this? Yeah, that was more in the end. I was never being busy with money so much. You know, it's just having a good time. So I came from the street, as I just told you, and all of a sudden everybody started throwing with money to me. I made lots of money with the, with the parties and with, you know, I bought a coffee shop. Uh, we, owned our, we had our own club uh, at some point. We had, it was always money. And, and but uh, I didn't really had a good business plan. I was an addict, uh, became addicted, and uh, there were more people in the beginning, of course, starting the scene. Uh, there was about maybe 20 people in Holland being busy with in in several places, getting it 
from the underground up. You know, I was of course not the only one. Um, as a group, and uh, but then the next generation came, and they were much more business. Uh, they came there and hey, this is business, and they start doing it uh, very professional. And uh, me too, we also start doing it professional. <laughs> But then I collapsed at uh, some point because of my addiction, and then, 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 yeah, then everything changed into into dust. Yeah, like everything I touched changed into gold in the, in the beginning because I really go there with my heart and we give the best parties and when, yeah, we had all the artists and good music and good times and we had the, the bollocks and the, and we we're brave enough to to squat places and we we're always we were on top of the game. Um, yeah, and at some point, life turned against me and and I collapsed and then uh, a year later I had two years later I had a year later I had nothing anymore was, uh, literally the company was uh, as good as bankrupt and I couldn't deal with it anymore and the only thing I was, was using more using more using more and that took a few years to climb out of there and then all of a sudden yeah I thought okay I'm clean now I'm looking at my life again shit all all my com competition were also my friends by the way Build it up. They moved on, so they have big festivals and big thing. And I didn't know how to pay my rent in the end of the month. Yeah. How do you felt in this moment? Yeah, that was a deep rock bottom. Yeah, that was very confrontating. Mm. Yeah, but actually the whole period before already, the rock bottom is uh, really uh, a very dark place to be. Yeah, really powerless, really not understanding it. Like, how is it possible? I couldn't really get my grip, my finger also. That I'm addicted because hey, once in a while I went to Thailand for two months. I don't use cocaine in Thailand. There was no cocaine, and I couldn't even bother. So, and I'm not using ev cocaine every day. I'm a binger, so sometimes I don't use for two, three weeks. But, uh, the the, the, uh, the uh, junkie lays under the bridge and doesn't have a house. I've got a beautiful house and a boat and a car, and uh, I'm not a junkie. So it was really difficult for me to understand that, uh, yeah, that I was an, a junkie. Yeah. I was an addict. And but really the place where I got was really darker. People who are also the people I attract, I'm all I feel like I'm poisoned. You know, the so um, the people who I are around me are affected by my lifestyle, my behavior, my or the worrying about me. So also the people I attract were different. Yeah. And then all of a sudden ships are sinking. Everybody jumps, phew, runs away. And I'm only in my basement uh, using, using, using and that is the most dark place a human being can be. Mm. Really dark thoughts and yeah, lonely. Yeah, and even if and I still gave those parties, I felt really lonely at the parties also. It was really, yeah, it was a horrible place to be when yeah. you, something that brought me so a lot started biting me in the ass. Because let's be honest, I also had a lot of creativity when. Uh, Designing podiums, coming up with new ideas for new parties was always when, when not always, but yeah, when we drinking and using, and it also had brought me a lot. And when it started turning against me, yeah, and it was hard. Yeah, it was really hard. I lost a lot of. Uh, yeah, I was really lonely. Really, uh, yeah, I started more isolating, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, really dark place. And in this moment, disappointed, disappointed, Disa disappointed, shameful. Mm. Yeah. And in this moment, with that feelings, low self-esteem, hmm? low self-esteem. Yeah. Yeah. Can imagine. And in this moment, do you have also the, or do you have the ability to think about what your uh, family is thinking about that when you are, and yeah, when you are using that much? No, no. self-centered. No, huh? Really self, uh, very self-centered at that moment. And and I remember my mom came to me. They they made it very clear what they that they were worried, of course. And my mom said to me, if you continue like this, we're going to find you dead one one day. And, uh, but I couldn't stop. Oh, yeah, that's you say that, but I thought, well, at least I've lived in, uh, a rock and roll life. And as long as I don't have pain when I am die, mm. I said that to my mother. You know, of course I don't want to die. That shows how powerless I was. Yeah. I really thought like, yeah, okay, I hear you, mom, but whatever I try and I don't stay longer clean than two months. Mm. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was painful. And yeah, you, painful you, times. You, you've been a beautiful, beautiful. I have a lot of love to give. A lot of. I've got a little bit of talent, and I love, love, um, love people. I love life, and then at some point you're just so lonely and everything, everything I touched mm. turned into shit instead of gold. Yes, yeah, that's that, true. That did not happen overnight. It's a process. And would you say that this was the biggest failure in your life, this this stage, or was there something where you, where you would say, "Wow, this was a big failure or a big mistake in my life"? Yeah, well, I have certain moments in my life. It's always easy afterwards, of course. Hey, if I would have there gone left, uh, I would have catch the tram and I would have been in time there and get that million. Yeah, that's always easy afterwards, of course. But getting a gun from a policeman is not my smartest move, of course. <laughs> 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 and I'm also not so 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 quick because okay. then if you sweat 15, the first time you put your head in between an open window, you, you take something, there's a police copper sleeping. You shouldn't do anything criminal afterwards anymore with that luck. <laughs> <laughs> I did not 20 years ago. <laughs> Idiot things yes. afterwards. So yes. I was not so quick with that. No, that was, uh, uh, but the, the, the drugs really uh, brought me uh, brought me on my knees. Mm. Yeah. Also, I think family-wise or girlfriend-wise, girlfriend it's also, I think, really hard that when they see you always in this addiction, also fighting always against yourself, not l n totally not possible to live a healthy life. I think that's really hard. And this also makes people really lonely then. They have, in this moment when they are with people partying, they, they feel, okay, I have a lot of people around me, but then you go home and you feel, I think, it's my, it's my uh, opinion, so lonely. And then you are really confronted by all these feelings and by all this, what you also explained now. I think this is really tough, huh? Yeah, it is. Mm. Yeah, for the people, it's a family disease. I'm, I'm doing a program to stay clean and sober and, and uh, with a lot of success and I had lots of conversations with my mother and make up with her for and as also asked what my addiction did with her and then she said because I made a lot of money I didn't need much I didn't take money from her you know but so my, I, my head always told me yeah, first of all where were you divorced my father and I got in the boarding school and and I you don't pay my drugs so but she said the worries the worries police at my door, uh, visiting you in prisons, visiting you in, in, in hospital. Uh, um, I know you give a party Saturday and then your phone is off till Thursday. And I've um, been scared shitless. Yeah. So Sometimes I was three days a week and I knew where I was binging and rock and rolling around. And then she sent my younger brother to go find me somewhere. So you turned off your phone on Saturday and just turned it off on Thursday? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Three days, okay. three four days benches. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there were they could have. Lots of people I've been in boarding school with. I started multigroup with. Mm -hmm. uh, people I've been in rehab with did not survive. Wow. Okay. I know more people dying from um, the disease of addiction than from cancer. And yeah, very very good close friends of mine. Mm. Or they step out of life, or they have an overdose, or they get the disease because of they're using or they're sitting in a far prison in Peru mm -hmm. all because of our addiction. Yeah, wow. it's a lot. That's really a lot. And it's on and on, like the whole society is built on, on addiction. Every company tries to create something which we are addicted. There's whole studies about sure. how with likes even on your phone and you see all swiping and everything. Swiping yes. and it's all thought of how to make somebody addictive to keep yeah. it's in in in, in sugar it's in in, in so the whole society uh, oil that's make people it's addicted true. and yeah social media <laughs> it's also the same huh? huge yeah yeah, yeah. it's Crazy. the same mechanism yes it's the same reward system you know if you post something and you get a lot of likes and people start it's the same uh, dopamine uh, dopamine dopamine sensors that's so true. it's for me by drugs of no choice was cocaine but can be sex, can be likes, can be gambling, and that's also what I noticed when I stopped using that. You just take the drugs away. There's a gap. I need to refill that. How do you refill that? Spirituality. It's a spiritual uh, program. It's a spiritual uh, 
what this illness. what does this mean for you because spirituality is also for everyone else something different what is it for you i cuddle a tree every morning when i wake up i go outside and i cuddle a tree <laughs> <laughs> for half hour <laughs> is it I'm true fine. no, no. <laughs> there are people huh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no and that's nothing wrong with that no, no for me it's uh, like uh, i did i did not wake up in the morning and think ah i want to be catch spiritual now i got a gun in my neck like you get on your knees and get spiritual or we pull the trigger you know that's my addiction mm -hmm. saying that and uh, for me it's like uh, getting an um, and becoming a different personality just change my whole personality change my behavior change my get really honest about everything don't have secrets anymore i can't afford secrets anymore you know i need to have a lot of willingness because i need to do stuff every on a daily base uh, to i go to uh, to meetings where we get together and we share stuff i help other addicts I go to uh, clinics and schools where I do my story, um, so that keeps me really centered. I do um, um, it's a 12-step program, in which we uh, first admit that I'm powerless over drugs, and then I start to clean up my closet. I'm going to really, I can't afford uh, resentment, so I have a look to my resentments. What was my part of it? Um, can I forgive? Um, what? Just do a whole process and make up with people I've harmed which I have to do the rest of my life. <coughs> um, so we are, so in a, a meditation, meditation, I go to uh, retreats, retreats mm -hmm. once, in, uh, once in a while, just go away, sit in silence for, uh, for a week, um, I meditate, breathing sessions, nice. the stuff I need to do to stay clean and then slowly my personality is changing. Yes. But in the beginning when I get clean and I come home out of rehab and all of a sudden you know, here I'm sitting on the, on the mess of my own life my body is damaged uh, my finances are damaged my family my kids my dog my wife my co own company everything and it's really difficult to then i'm really also scared i really feel a lot of fear like how i'm gonna do all this how i'm gonna just, just the angry big world there and I'm just f every feeling comes in every Sleeping is difficult, eating is different, it's all, all really... Uh, so if I don't have a program then of some guidance on a daily basis, how to deal with life, some emotional development, I'm still eating, because that's when I start using and missed the normal family life. So mm -hmm. some things I don't know how to deal with in life. So I can really say that to my daughter once in a while, uh, some things I just can't help. But now I'm at least emotional available for uh, for my daughter and she's uh, and 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 I'm a father again and I'm a colleague again and I'm I'm, I'm a son again I'm a brother again and yes. I have a full life back now. It's, it's so amazing, yeah, really, because for me this is also the underdog mentality, you know, not to give up and always, yeah, to go for your goals and your goal was okay I want to be healthy I want to be successful I go for that and yep. how matter no matter what and you you made it now so you can be really proud of you and I also want to look on a different side of the underdog mentality it's also that we also have to do things what other people are not doing you know so and I hear it there was a story also on a festival, a big festival, when they said, okay, you are not allowed to make yeah. here the marketing. So what, what does mean, Ilya yeah. say? <laughs> yeah, but I got born, we were really poor. We had no warm water in the house. We were just, just not, not, and then I got lived in, born, uh, in, in a small flat by myself at 16. But that doesn't mean I'm chanceless. You know, I, when I start living on myself, I've always had a lot of love for music. I love music, so when the house music came and I became part of that and I just wanted to give the parties and I wanted to do better and we just and just go for it, just do your thing, just don't be scared, you know, just, just go with that energy, let it flow, let it, let it, and that, what, that was exactly what was happening in those, in those years. Um, but also, I was one of the first and there was a competition coming and I never stood in the way. All of a sudden the competition got bigger than me and they said, they closed the door to me. So normally you do promotion, on each other's festival. They come do promotion on my festival with flyers or banners and I come to their festival and all of a sudden they closed the door and said you cannot come here and not do promotion. And it was uh, was a uh, festival, uh, no it was Defcon. <laughs> it was at the beach at, at that days. now it's not at the beach anymore in, in Almere. And uh, so I just asked for a license to put a boat in the water 
because it has completely, you don't have to do with the government, you have completely com different rules. And I got it. So I had a huge boat with a flag, a bit like, and I built a whole pirate ship there with a big uh, ground zero, multi groove. And when behind me, they had a boat with fireworks. And so when the party was finished and everybody was looking to the, towards my boat and all the fireworks <laughs> was going off, and I was like, <laughs> best promotion was in the video, was on all the photos, and uh, yeah. So let me repeat this. They say to you, okay, I close the door, you are yep. not allowed to come in, and yep. what does an underdog say? Okay, I come out of, uh, I through just the come window. Through the so yeah, I come through the window, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had also flyers hidden on the terrain, like people going in and just digging them up and start spreading them. We had all kinds of tricks went from the water. I remember the police came, and first they came, uh, yeah, uh, with, with the boat, and, uh, and they said, this you, have to, you have to take this boat away. And I pulled the license out of my pocket. Oh. So when he moved, then he came back again. He said, I'm going to overrule this license because there's firework there. Because the, the organization from, from, from DEFCON was really pushing uh, the police, like, get them out, get them out, get them out. So he came back again. He said, I'm overruling the license. You have to get your boat away. I said, I don't know how to get this boat. Have you seen how big this is? It's funny. You have the key. Good luck with it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was all a uh, 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 big army boat and a whole platoon in front of it with all. And he Oh, fuck it. <laughs> he left it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, we go middle of the night, at one o'clock at night, we went over the, over the whole uh, lake with the boat. It was a complete, uh, yeah, what a story. I was completely shattered the next day when I came in Amsterdam in the morning, five o'clock with my uh, pirate ship. <laughs> so, yeah, but that was uh, Ilya Guerilla, they called me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ilya Guerilla. We always had Guerilla actions. Uh, that I, I was good in that, just to do crazy things at parties to get the attention. What so was there else? What, what and, and also they, they called me the next day, because they're also friends of mine, the competition, and they're also friends. And they said, you fucking rascal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all they, we've been photoshopping for one week before we could release <laughs> our pictures. <laughs> yeah, so, but, uh, and, and they, were, they are very good friends of mine. We work together now, and, uh, and okay. uh, yeah, so. And what kind of uh, other crazy things you also done? Well, I squatted all those all those, all those tunnels, and uh, and uh, and, and um, 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 that was pretty, pretty, pretty. You have the Ring Road of Amsterdam, and in 1979, 1980, so much more cars came on the road that the Ring Road around Amsterdam was not big enough anymore. So they make it twice as big, oh. but it had some tunnels, bicycle tunnels under it. But they decided to not use them anymore and just put doors in front. And we know to find them, and we knew like uh, also like. Like places like if there's war, you know, where, where you can hide and stuff. And so we all squatted those places. We look at night and I've been places and I thought, this warehouse is empty. And then we had a look to put the, sign, the light and sound system in and it was not empty at all. Well, I'm breaking in actually, you know, I'm <laughs> it's, not, it's not by law, yeah, it's somebody else's warehouse. So we did, yeah, we did quite some crazy, crazy things. We did some actions by Thunderdome, I uh, had uh, a car with all uh, lint that the police use to set off when there is some criminal um, mm -hmm. all, with all the people in white you and in police uniforms so people came out walking out of Thunderdome and what's going on what's going on there and we had this doo -doo -doo -doo, and the car standing uh, like this and sound system out of it and a guy laying like this over the and everybody came look and then the police start flying you know for the next uh, the next party <laughs> crazy things just Amazing. posters everywhere and, and yeah just just but it's just you want to get something done just go out and do it Yes, also to think totally different, to make something different. So I, I know that you're really known for that. And that's also, in my opinion, what makes you successful more than other people if you're doing things what yeah, nobody does. Also, they are on parties like big uh, cages where uh, nice women are dancing and what you put there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some, uh, some cages uh, and uh, it was an old school party. Sure. Like, uh, okay, we'll come back to the 90s. So what I do, I put crannies in it. <laughs> 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 the sexy underwear. <laughs> uh, yeah, you want old school party, old school dancing. <laughs> Yeah, just take, don't take yourself always a goddamn serious, you know, <laughs> yes. just take the piss a bit. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, just go out and do it. Just, just follow the music. The music, your heart will bring you places, you know. And if doors are too closed and, and, and doesn't feel good, try something else. It's true. It's, and, uh, yeah, I came from the street and I've been, uh, I've, been, I've been very blessed. I'm very lucky. I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. I survived it and I have to build up a beautiful company. And we, uh, I've been, uh, discovered many artists uh, which I started working with. When I worked with people who create podiums and 
um, the people who produce music, and 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 I surrounded myself now with uh, you know I surrounded myself with beautiful people. Um, yeah, they came like when I when I took care of my addiction, you know, I surrendered and okay, I start doing this program and get get clean and and and. Also, the energy changes. I'm not toxic anymore. I, my, when I changed it, when I changed, my surrounding also started to change. Some people stayed, but they're just acting different to me. You know, with dif different interaction with them. Some people moved. New people came, uh, and uh, and miraculous for the people. Uh, from I'm just telling you the story about Defcon, and then when I got clean, and and my yeah, um, I was sitting on my mess, and then one guy was working with us. He said, "Call those." People from ID and and Q dance and 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 uh, no 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 because I remember all those story that they not allow me to fly and uh, I'm not gonna call them I have all ego and pride and they don't like me and uh, I've opened the door and and then he said, call them and at some point I called them because I saw in the interview they're saying how Multigroup was being important to the dance scene for them and I called them and they were like hey Ilya how are you come over. And they gave me a beautiful present. They said you can use my club, and 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 uh, to so you get financially a little bit uh, air again, you know. So you don't have to pay rent, you don't have to pay the light and sound system. We favor you that, so you can get financially a little, little bit back on your feet. And how can we help? And maybe you can host. So they really reached out to me and and helped me. Uh, nice. So uh, yeah. This the all because also you also started to change, right? This is then also everything around you started to change. That's beautiful. That was amazing, yeah. yeah. From a very dark place. I moved also out of Amsterdam, started living in between the farms and just created my own world and when one have to do so much with people anymore. Mm -hmm. And then Catherine, my beautiful uh, wife and uh, and uh, business partner, she uh, she said, Hey look online, they're all talking about Multigroup and you. I didn't know Facebook, so I was never on on, on, on those socials and she was. And she said, there's whole groups here about those legendary, legendary parties of you. And look what they post and look what they say. And there was whole communities going on. And I looked, huh? oh, wow, oh, that's my flyer. And wow. And then that put the fire a little bit on. And then she said, let's, let's do a good party with this. And we started doing, uh, going really back to the basic, really, really from, from what felt good. This music we like, this location. We started doing a reunion. We started celebrating 25 years multigroove. And the energy came back, the power came back, and it just started flowing and growing again. And the book came out, and uh, the documentary, uh, another documentary, and things that I got clean most of all uh, together. And, and yeah, it's really amazing. There's all kinds. Of the a world beyond my wildest dreams, mm. as long as do not give up, you know, do not, uh, but also stop fighting. Yes. It's, I keep telling people, oh, you need to be strong, you need to be strong, you're really strong because you're not using. No, I stop being strong. Mm. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, I'm just not fighting anymore, just, it's enough, just surrender and let people ask for help. Uh, I just went there and asked for help and then the help that, is, that came is not the help I wanted. It came in a different way. And I said, okay, fuck, I'll, I'll go through the dust. And then, yeah, sooner uh, the air came. Um, things start moving better. I also start slowly after being clean a little while. Uh, my daughter had a little, uh, with the first school, she had, uh, I was still using, and she had some problems at school, and she was not really good focusing. After I got clean, she also changes. Wow. Yeah, she just did two years in one, and finished off the school, and, and, and Whole, um, I start slowly uh, looking in the mirror, and the guy I see in the mirror, I start to like him again. Nice. I looked at him and can say, "I love you." And in all of these nice things, what would you say was your biggest success? <coughs> Bringing up a little girl. No. Yeah. Yeah, that was with a lot of struggle. Yeah, Olaf, I love you, Catherine. Yeah, that is that is that big success, but also yeah, Rikov. Overcoming an addiction is, uh, is is something big. Well, I had a few of them, you know, from from going out of boarding school, living on the street, to building up an an, an, an company which had which millions go go over, you know, where we just we were doing pretty successful. Yeah, that was from a bit pretty chanceless situation and place. I've yeah. built something up, and yeah, and I've. Uh, yeah, that's the reason why you are sitting here now with me. This is a big inspiration for all the people, what we want to show, how you can really, what do you need to come really from the bottom up to the top. So what would you recommend to the people if they are now in a dark stage of their life? What would you recommend them, how they can get up to the top? Yeah, well, from 
um, sometimes the cup just have to empty, you know, sometimes just, just, just after something bad happens and, and just um, before, before beautiful things can happen again, you need to reach a rock bottom, you know, and, and, and yeah, just for me it was admitting that, I'm, that I have a problem, even more admitting that I am the problem. Yeah, then something could change, you know, and then I could work on me. I can start to work a lot on how my girlfriend and everybody else would change. No, I should change, you know. Um, that, and just keep on following your dreams, you know. It's just stop fighting. Stop, just just do what your heart... That For me, that really works, you know, when I said every time when I... It's also when I do a party. If I do a party and I really want to make a lot of money and they, oh, I need the money and I'm going in, and I fail. If I go something which I do and I think this is the best, this is a party I would love to go to. This is, and then, then it's successful. Just, yeah, follow your heart, live one day at a time. Um, don't, be, don't be scared. Mm. Don't be, uh, yeah, just if, if you try to go for success and you fail, your life is not depending on it. Nobody so. comes to shoot you and say, okay, you, you didn't make it. Just step up again and just yeah. if you love, step up one more time more than you fall. You're already there. That's true. That's true. And you've done it a lot, huh? Yes, <laughs> but fall. now I've fought. No more falling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how life goes, you know. For me, it's like that's uh, what also belongs to a life, you know. If you feel alive when you also fall and then you step up. We always struggle. We always have these things in our life that are not going that good. But I, in my opinion, it's so important that we always focus on that, how we can change it, you know. Exactly. So, and I think... The more you become successful, the more you have the ability to come out quicker out of the situations. Before, it took you maybe one month, two months, three months to, to become now um, back to your own energy. But now you said it's really uh, turning like in seconds, oh, I don't go there. And you always decide to go on the um, light part of your life and yes. not to go on the dark side, yes. right? Yes, yes. That's a really, really good one you say, because for me it's being clean and, and sober is, is um, also living clean, so that means also no lies, no no fooling people, no just live, walk in the light. Yes. You know, that's really, I've, I always had one step in criminality, one step in dark things, always in quick fixes, always in, yeah, as soon as I let all that go and just start doing life in, an, in a normal way and, and yeah, being, be, uh, be good to yourself, be good to the people uh, around me. Yeah, so much things. It, it, I, I just changed so much. I remember I coming at, at at the company at our at our team, and uh, but I'm already in recovery, a few years clean, and then the, 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 the people I'm working with. I, normally I came in and, and I bring a lot of panic, like, oh, there's competition on the date. Maybe we should do all different. Maybe we should do, and the whole team is like, please go home. You know, like you only bring in chaos. And now I see that people in my team now it's more the attitude of how can I help. What do you need? What for me? Mm -hmm. Tell me and, and don't create chaos. Trust them. Let it put them in their power, in their energy. So if you put other people in their energy by giving them faith and confidence and helping them, yeah. The biggest thing that helps, that, that makes me happy, is helping other people. That's so amazing. And this is what I w wanted also to, um, yeah, to make the sentence complete now is if, if you are in the dark part of your life, I think the most important thing is also to put much more light in your life, you know, and you, yeah. you, you started that with this, it. so um, you, you start to help other people, you started also to love yourself, and you have to replace all this bullshit, what you are doing then with good things, and then I think your life can change, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, the strange thing is that how, the mind, how my mind works, like I can, for example, I can sit here and have a thought, I'm going to take Tina for dinner tonight and I'm going to pay for her. Yeah, 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 what a nice person. I'm going to, yeah. And I get all warm feelings because I'm having a nice positive idea. I want to give you a nice dinner. I'm going to cook for you. And, you know, and um, that already makes something different. So if I have a positive thought, I already feel happier. Mm -hmm. So, and I have always, when I'm using and when I'm in the dark place, it's most of all the dark thoughts. It's constantly that negative thought about myself, the negative situation. As soon as I already start thinking, hey, shall I stand up for that woman in, in tra public transport, you know, uh, for the pregnant woman, that I already get a positive more thought, you know. It's already sort of, mind is, is, is a powerful thing. So when I start 
getting more positive, starting to stop with everything, eat more positive, uh, sport, uh, it's made a huge difference. And helping others is when, what I learned is when I got a week sober, clean and sober, I can, somebody who was one day sober, I can help them. Because yes. I can tell them how I did the first six days, you know, yes. day by day by day. And I'm now five and a half years clean and sober. So if somebody is just one day clean, it's, um, you can always help another. You can always, and my, um, my experience is uh, like gold dust for somebody else, you know. I can yes. It's really like this and this is also, I think for the other people who are watching this interview now, you are a big inspiration to show the people, okay, I don't have to be this kind of legend with millions on my bank account. No, you do, just have to be yourself and just have to be one step further than someone else and I always can help someone just with one step, you know. That is it's it. amazing. That is, that is where my real joy comes from. That yeah. is really, that's amazing. Well, I can make problems in my head and there's all the world is going down and, and, and I call it problems of my own making. In the beginning, I, I have, I have, um, I have so you know what a sponsor is? Yes. Sp yeah, sponsor is not, it's not like Heineken, can sponsor a party, but uh, <laughs> a sponsor is somebody who is longer clean than me yeah. and who is helping, guiding me um, to the program and to stay clean. And I call him and I've got a huge problem and I call him and he said, and he's listening to me, I'm very patient. And he said, I don't hear a big problem, I hear three small problems. Oh, and he cuts it just in three. And just, oh yeah, yeah. And just piling them up. Or I'm calling him and I say, I have a huge problem. And then he listens and he, that's not your problem, that's your wife's problem. Stay off. <laughs> 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 you just make it your own problem. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing, uh, amazing that's how those things work. And so I had a lot of, I had a lot of help from people. A lot of, a lot of that's people. That's the thing. There I were think people who were clinic sober who reached out to me. Yes, I think this is a really, really huge part also to become successful, to become healthy, if you are able to take also health from other people, right? Yes, yes, yes. admitting, mm -hmm. stay humble, yeah. admitting you're powerless. And for me, it, it's, it's, for me it's less I'm, I'm, I'm not so busy with money anymore. Yeah, of course, hey, we have our certain targets which we need to get to be able so we can, everybody in the company can live from it. But I'm not busy anymore with with. Uh, it's, it's just I'm just being. Uh, if I'm clean and sober today, and I have food in the fridge, and, and and actually, the more I was pulling, that I was trying to say earlier, the more the unhappier I get. And since I let things go, things all of a sudden start happening. It's like I'm decide to go sit in the boat and just see what brings me. You know, and uh, it's instead of constantly fighting and 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 yeah, and actually the rich the richdom is is. is Connecting, connecting with you and connecting and seeing my little girl doing really well and welcoming people at my party, you know, giving a nice show and I go to the door and I walk with people into my event and they're like, oh wow, they love how we decorated it. I go home and had a wonderful night, stop a new artist and wow, we're lucky, give me a stage. The guy makes it. Yeah, that, that, those things are priceless, that are, they have no price card in it. That's true. Yes, collect moments and not money, right? Yeah, yep. that's the thing. So yeah, I have really the opinion that this change is really huge. From homeless, addiction, now to successful, healthy and spiritual person. So how is your life filled now? I feel the biggest reward is calm um, and I have choice. I can make healthy choices. I didn't feel I had choices in uh, in the old days, you know. Uh, when I'm angry, uh, I needed to drink, or you know. And now I just here, it's much more calm. I've, uh, yeah, that's, that's just a huge. Um, yeah, the coffee brought me a lot. Being clean and it, it, it was hard work. It is still hard work. I'm still on a daily basis. I'm not recovered from. Uh, I'm not cured from addiction. I recovered from addiction. If I sh let slippy, my addiction will come back, and I will use again. I have no, I know it in the, on a daily basis. But it brought me a lot, that whole program, that whole being spiritual, the whole biting to the dust part. And, and um, I can give an example when Corona came three years ago. Um, my company all of a sudden, after, after the addiction, I climbed out of it. We started building Multigroove up again. Ground Zero became really, yeah, we're at the, the, our biggest hardcore festival really successful again we felt the energy and we start getting people in our team again so we worked so hard for that first 
on ourselves and also on our company. And, and then also three years later, Corona. Bam. Slap. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, that is pretty sour, of course. But the, there I got, uh, my sp I called my sponsor and I said, well, my whole company is locked off and my party is not going to happen. I have to cancel. And, and he said, mooi. He said, good. More time for you to help other people. <laughs> so I started focusing on, on, on helping uh, other addicts. And then I heard our president um, from Holland saying, okay, there is no festivals, there is no clubs, but the campings can go open again from the 1st of July. And then I remember there was a guy who had a camping near the German border and he bought it uh, like an investment, but he didn't really like it. And he said, do you want to give parties here? I said, no, much too far from, from any big city. And now for the way, I call him. Do you still have that camping? Yeah, 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 I still have that camping. So I go to, again, here he comes, Defcon, <laughs> the, the owner of Defcon and IDT. And um, I'm with them in a creative um, team to think in, uh, of solutions. They invited me, can you imagine, from somebody who was using lonely in his basement and, and who li whose life looked really small and miserable. And, and, and I've been asked by those people to sit with them in a creative um, setting to just think of solutions. What can we do? Stay positive. And I came with the idea to do a uh, camping. I uh, said, okay, we cannot go to Mysteryland or to Ground Zero, uh, just stand there with our teeth in the fences and uh, ah, partying. But we can go on holiday to the camping and bring your kids also. And they loved that idea. They went with us to the camping and then they, uh, they said, um, one of the guys from, uh, from QDance, uh, they have a uh, spiritual center in Italy called Mandali. Um, and he said, let's bring some light to the world. Why don't we do something, use this opportunity to do something really beautiful. So we came in a whole spiritual called tight, Tightloos, means timeless. Mm -hmm. And we came a little bit uh, with uh, yeah, shamanic um, um, ice baths, uh, yoga, meditatie. It was just a gathering of, 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 of really nice acoustic um, music. People who were normally building the stages, decorating the stages from Mysteryland and Thunderdome. And they were now building uh, rafts for children. Really nice pirate ships again. <laughs> Yeah, we had five weeks of timeless in the middle of uh, in the middle of Corona, and it was just a little bubble where there was no outside world, no Corona. It was really awesome. So that shows also the creativity. Um, if you just not start running with your nose behind your tail and and just start being open for solutions and. How like was that. this going? How well, well, was, it was it really a success? Yeah, yeah, it was really successful. Yeah, the first really? two weeks nobody knew it was not so busy. But the first people who came, they were like, wow, and posting and doing it. And the last three weeks, we were completely full. That's yeah. amazing. And this is how really our, also the underdog mentality is, you know, not like, OK, problem, I can't do this. OK, I go to bed and cry, you know, no, just always finding solutions, always thinking creativity, yes, right? Yes, 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 yes. And when, uh, when I'm not doing that, it's always me standing in the way between me and my happiness. Yes. It's always me. I need to step on the side and let the energy flow again and ask for help again. So I came with an idea. I went to somebody bigger than me, asked for help. They added something to the idea. And you straight away felt that the universe like this idea had to happen. But I got the sparkle, the idea. But hey, without IDT, it would have never happened. And it, if it's a good idea, all the doors go open, the light goes green. Everybody was jumping on it and it became such an amazing vibe and feeling what happened there that summer at Tidelows is, is priceless it's, you cannot think of that those things happen when you're part of the problem a part of the solution and not being part of the problem it's a decision it's a decision to not be part of the problem but be part of the solution is there anything else what you want to tell to the people if, if anybody's struggling with addiction just get help that it is really possible to, to live clean and clean and sober and, and be happy I always thought, okay, you take my drugs away, I can't be happy. Well, um, I'm going to parties, I'm going to festivals, I do everything. And um, the obsession to use is gone. You know, if somebody offers me a beer, oh, no, no, thanks, I don't drink. Tina, do you want it? Give me water, please. It's just not an issue anymore. It's just, it is really possible. So that's my message to, uh, to an addict. Just admit you have a problem, ask for help. Um, that, and for, for people who want to achieve something in life, doesn't matter if, if, if you're born rich, doesn't have to be a benefit. You know, uh, just work hard, follow your heart, um, connect, surround yourself. 
you can always see what, how somebody's success is, is with who is he surrounding himself with. Mm. If you surround yourself with good people, with a good heart, um, honest people, you will, you will get your goals. Thank you so much, really, yeah. also for your time. Thank you for everything. And I'm pretty sure that this interview will really inspire a lot of people. So thank you for that. Thank you, Tina. Yeah. Love you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>